The Suicide Squad are a group of villainous villains that have been chosen by the government to carry out covert operations to reduce their sentences. This is a very comic book specific idea. It involves superpowered individuals who have committed crimes and wound up in prison because of this. So obviously, the only logical question to ask at this point is this. Could the Suicide Squad exist in real life? Hello and welcome to the show with issues, I'm Orum, and let's start with a quick recap of what the Suicide Squad is and who its frequent flyers are. The modern interpretation of the squad first appeared in Legends No. 3 and was founded by Amanda Waller, head of the government organization Task Force X. She created it to essentially have a very powerful group of expendable operatives, handpicked from the super prison Bell Rev, who are willing to go on top secret missions in exchange for reduced sentences over time. To keep them in check and as a measure to keep the squad a secret from the public, she had explosive devices put on them that could be detonated at any time. Some people you may recognize from the many incarnations nations of the squad are Rick Flagg, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, and Harley Quinn, just to name a few. But because of the nature of the squad, the roster is always in flux. In fact, in the new 52 Suicide Squad book, someone dies pretty much every issue, but I digress. So if the squad is, as the name implies, a huge suicide run, why would you want to sign up for it? Why not just stay safe at Bell Rev and eat your three square meals until you're back on the streets? Most accept the offer because Task Force X provides a reduction on their sentence time, which could even give people who have lifetime sentences a chance to get out before they die. This is a good thing, especially seeing as a lot of the time criminals reform during their sentences and could do a lot of good on the outside world, but simply can't because they're stuck in prison. And this is honestly kind of a problem in our world. As of right now, there are only four major programs offered by the Bureau of Prisons to reduce sentence in prison. One is the residential drug abuse program, where if eligible, you could work up to 18 months off of your sentence by participating in a 500 hour class over 10 months that teaches you about drug abuse. Captain Boomerang could probably learn a thing or two from the class if we're being honest. The requirements for actually getting in the program are very strict though, and not many inmates are accepted. Another program offered by the BOP is the Second Chance Act, which is fairly new. It was signed in by President Bush in 2008 and essentially is just for helping newly released prisoners find their footing again. It doesn't really reduce sentence, but it allows an inmate to stay in a halfway house for the last 12 months of their sentence instead of in a prison. The requirements are pretty strict here as well, but El Diablo, for example, would be a great candidate for this, seeing as he quickly turned around and reformed after being apprehended. So far, these programs aren't bearing much fruit in terms of reducing sentences, especially compared to the Suicide Squad, but let's move on to the third option, the Compassionate Release Program. This is simply the early release of an inmate on the grounds of a safety precaution of some kind. It's most often given to inmates who have terminal illnesses where life expectancies are less than 18 months. Other possible reasons for a compassionate release could be a debilitating mental illness, age-related conditions like Alzheimer's or, in very rare cases, to care for a family member. The fourth and final program that the Bureau of Prisons offers for sentence reduction is the Commutation of Sentence Program. This is essentially an essay written by the inmate where they state their reason for immediate release or sentence reduction. You can write virtually anything, but stuff like illness, familial issues, and the like definitely help with the consideration. For example, King Shark could sit down and write his essay about how Bell Rev dehydrates him, which is cruel and unusual punishment going against the Eighth Amendment. And that's it. That's all our government is offering to help inmates reduce their sentence time in prison. Because of this, groups like the Families Against Mandatory Minimums, also known as FAM, have begun to crop up. FAM fights mainly for a reduction on the minimum sentence time for drug abuse. If you can't reduce the sentence in prison, you might as well try to do it beforehand. So if a Suicide Squad-like program was introduced into our government and offered by the BOP, it would be a pretty ideal choice. It's the only option out of the four current programs that almost guarantees a big chunk of sentence reduction, assuming it works the same way it does in the comics. But what's stopping an inmate from joining the Suicide Squad, getting out, committing another crime, and getting thrown right back in prison. This is probably one of the reasons the current programs are so strict, to prevent this. But another way to accommodate for this is through various rehabilitation programs. These come in many forms, like Houses of Healing, for example. This is a program that helps an inmate come to terms with whatever crime they committed and recover from it. It also helps them to be confident in life after their sentence, so they don't feel pressure to just break the law again to survive. But these programs cost money, which people don't like to spend, which has led our prisons to become more punishment-focused instead of actually trying to help inmates get back on their feet. Punishment in prisons works in a scarily similar way to how most schools operate. If you commit an infraction, depending on how serious it is, you're either immediately punished or given a shot. Interfering with a staff member in performance of duties. Didn't your boyfriend teach you how to treat a staff member floppy tits? That's a shot! Shots are essentially demerits in a school setting. These will be considered when asking for more privileges. Other than getting a shot, an inmate could face extension of sentence, confiscation of items, transfer to a higher security prison, worse job, or solitary confinement, among other things. This combination of heavy punishment and low rehab is a sad reality in today's prisons, with the Eighth Amendment getting less and less respected over the years. But that's kind of what the Suicide Squad is. It represents that combo of rehab 
rehab and punishment. The villains are doing good things for the government and may even see the error of their ways like El Diablo did in the new 52 Suicide Squad, but that's paired with being constantly in life or death situations in the field. Not to mention that carries over to any downtime they have because of the bombs. At this point, we have to wonder if we're helping anyone at all. The existence of both rehabilitation and punishment cancel each other out. This is what leads to the debate between which is the better thing to practice in a prison, or just in general. It's just like the difference between positive and negative reinforcement. But let's assume, again, that a Suicide Squad program was introduced by the Bureau of Prisons. What would the inmates even be doing? If they're sent into war zones, that immediately increases the requirements and risk of joining, not to mention the even more specific skill set that's required to go on covert missions. It would take a lot of time, money, and effort to put Grandma Betty who stole a candy bar through the necessary skill training to send her off to the squad. Yes, that's hyperbole, but you see my point. Still not convinced? Well, what about all the mental illnesses that need to be treated before handing someone the tools necessary to complete whatever op a prisoner is sent on? Mental illness in prison today is higher than it's ever been, and because of the rise of punishment over rehab, it's not being treated and just continues to persist and grow. You could argue that this isn't much of an issue in the Suicide Squad setting because of the bombs, but one slip and someone who's just slightly off their rocker could lose it, a la the Hunt for Harley Quinn storyline. So it's pretty clear at this point that the Suicide Squad of the comics would not integrate very well into our current system, but that's not to say something similar couldn't come to term. One such alternative is a sort of anti-prison, a community that would replace a prison that essentially is just a government-sanctioned town of prisoners, like a more controlled, less drastic Australia. That presents a lot of its own issues, but you could take that a step further and provide a sentence reduction program where good behavior prisoners could work in the outside world and in a very secure and sanctioned fashion. So at the end of the day, could the Suicide Squad exist in our world? Probably not. Could better sentence reduction programs that aren't entirely impossible to enroll in exist in our world? Most definitely. What do you all think? Do you think the Suicide Squad could exist, or does exist in some conspiracy theory way? And what's your opinion on our current prison system's way of operation? Let's talk about it all in the comments. And of course, before you head out, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything that I upload every other Wednesday and every Saturday. That all being said, thank you so much for watching. Next time I deal with this itch in my neck, like I just, there's something there. Like I just hear this constant beeping all the time. Like there's some kind of bomb in there. Mendez is back, bitches.